This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and whatever is happening on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We are very, very glad that you are here. And special welcome to visitors. We're always happy to have visitors here at St. Mark's. We hope that you can make yourself at home. We do invite you to find the welcome cards in the pew racks ahead of you. White is in English, yellow is in Spanish. And if you would like to, you can fill that out and drop that in the offering plate. And Pastor Alicia and I will pray for you and include you any way you would like to be included. So please take advantage of those cards. Also, members, if you have um, any prayer requests that you would like us to know about, feel free to put that on the back of one of those cards and also drop that into the offering plate. And we will pray for you, add you to our prayer ministries as you would like. Well, today, as you know, is a special day. Today is a day of a congregational vote. So in order to make this run very smoothly and very enjoyably, we request that you would remain afterwards and enjoy the postlude, which you know is gonna be fabulous, right? And then uh, our president, Chris Lewis, will have some information about the vote that is coming up, or maybe you've already voted, um, and then we will have the vote. We need to wait a bit into the 10 o'clock hour for people from our 1115 service to arrive, but we will, we will make sure your time is well spent after that, we will go and enjoy coffee. Does that sound good to everyone? Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. Well, why are we here and what are we doing here? Let's together say our mission statement. Celebrating God's love and forgiveness, we serve others. We invite you to remain seated as we sing our opening song, Take My Life That I May Be. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Blessed be God, the one who comes. Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. 
for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbors? Okay. And set on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us hear the, hear the children's message. Morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. So today I'm going to tell you guys a little story, and it's about forgiveness. So our my story is a long time ago when I was in ninth grade, I had a friend who passed away. And in high school, when you were in ninth grade, there was a teacher who would uh, give you a letter to write, and then she would give it to you when you were a senior. So one time, I remember I was very upset, and sometimes you can do things when you're upset, right? And I remember that day, that specific friend of mine, she was in a class with me. So then I sat with another friend of mine in, in the class. She goes, oh my God, look at me. She's being so loud. Look at her. Oh my gosh, she's laughing so loud. I was like, oh yeah, you know, and I was kind of going with her. But then um, she had an accident. She passed away. Um, it came out in the news with something big. Um, and it was so like traumatizing for me because I was like, what? She passed away that same day, that same day that I agreed with my neighbor that she was being very rowdy and loud just because I was having a bad day. But then here comes the part. So when I was in 12th grade, they give me this card. In ninth grade, in that class she had with me in English, she had wrote on my card, God punishes you, but then he forgives you. Because when it came to that day, I sort of opened it, but one of my friends was like, oh, can I read? I was like, yeah, of course. She read it, right? She's like, oh my God, you have the best treasure. She's like, because knowing me wrote in your card, and I said, what? I didn't remember at all. I was in 12th grade, I didn't even remember what I had wrote in there. That same day, I lost the card. And God says, it's your punish. No, you were being rude, and I, and I got home, and I told this to my friends. I said, I feel so bad, you know, I did this. And I'm like, but he gave me the punished. He took away that letter. Then, like, maybe three days later, when we went on a trip as friends' trips, my friends say, you know what, Melissa, no. You're, very, you're a person who goes to church. God forgives you. Because even if you think you did in a bad way, you didn't. God forgives you, and he knows that you loved her. He knows that she was your friend. That day, I had a dream of her saying that she forgives me. So I was like, oh, my God, everything goes in hand, you know? And it's just so awesome how God forgives you after sometimes we can do even things when we're upset. And I was like, thank you, God. You know, and I'm proud that God forgave me. So it's something good. We can do things, but God always will forgive us. So we need to remember that, that God will forgive us. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Thank you, God, for this wonderful day. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for having all these wonderful people here. Take care of them, their family, and all those who are out there. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Today's reading is from Psalm 103, <clears throat> starting at verse 8. Please read responsibly with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? O oh Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. As for the heavens, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for all who fear you, O Lord. The second reading is from Genesis chapter 50, starting at, chap at verse 15. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong that we did him? So they approached Jesus, uh, Joseph saying, your father gave us this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming, harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when he spoke to them. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. In order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Here ends the reading. Please stand if you are able for the gospel. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all of his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, 
the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. All right, here we go. The words of Jesus, very, very hard. We make no apologies, but we spend time pondering and diving in deeply. I read an article recently. The article was about a murder victim's daughter who asked to speak to the governor of her state to honor their shared Christian faith by sparing the life of her mother's killer. The daughter of the victim, her name is Cynthia Vaughn, requested a meeting with the governor of her state to tell tell him of her story of forgiveness. Now, for most of her life, Cynthia supported the execution of her mother's murderer, publicly stating, I want that freak to burn. However, in 2012... She had a meeting with the murderer in his prison cell on death row to tell him about the pain that he had caused her. After I finished telling him about all the years of pain and agony, I heard a voice say, the voice said to me, that's it. Let it go. The next thing that came out of my mouth, she said, changed my life forever. I looked at him and told him that I couldn't keep hating him because it was doing nothing but killing me instead of him. And then I said, I forgive you. Forgiving her mother's murderer, she said, freed me of the anger that I was holding and allowed me to live more freely. Letting go of anger, she said, has let me love more. Remarkable, isn't it? I mean, that is truly remarkable, right? And it is called in this article a rare occurrence. Could you do that? Could I do that? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. With the help of God, the one in whom we live and breathe and have our being, with God's help, the answer is yes. Now, Jesus' words are incredibly hard today, are they not? Does anyone want to just say, I'm done, I checked out? Has anyone checked out mentally? hearing these words? Come on, let's be honest. First time through, you're like, oh, that last week was hard enough. This one's even harder. Forget it. I'm done, right? Come on, give me a few nods. I know you feel that way. I do, right? 
But before we go into the subject of forgiveness, a subject we will not complete today, we could do an entire series or a lifetime on it, but today we'll go as far as we can. We want to remind ourselves that when we are in the Gospel of Matthew, we have Jesus as the great rabbi, okay? So you have all received your letter of acceptance to the most elite rabbinical school in which the master teacher is Jesus, okay? Congratulations. Now, with that letter of acceptance, you have two choices. You can come further into the school of Jesus the rabbi and decide you will grapple with these things and fight with them and have them turn your stomach inside out and want to throw up a couple of times. Or you can turn around and leave. You can. The door is there. That's fine. But as you go out those doors saying, I'm done, this is too difficult, don't tell me to forgive, you don't know my story. When you reach for that door, a voice inside of you says, where else are you going to go? These are the words of eternal life. And so I hope you decide to turn back around, come back in, and with the rest of us, struggle with these very, very difficult words of Jesus. In this elite rabbinical school in which Jesus is the master teacher, we don't expect it to be easy. We expect it to be very difficult. We expect it to be life-changing. We expect it to turn us inside out and change us so that the kingdom of God can be manifest here, right? Isn't that what we want? changed lives, the kingdom or the realm of God to be right here, the realm where the rules of the human race just don't really apply. Things are different. Things are different in the realm of God. I would say sometimes you think of it as almost walking through Alice in Wonderland, through the looking glass, entering into a different realm where human rules don't apply. There is still justice, but mercy is so much bigger, so much bigger. We have to talk a little bit, though, about how this passage has been misused. How often in the history of Christendom, or maybe in your own family, has a victim been told, you must forgive, right? Or forgive and forget. Am I right? especially for giving with no accountability. That is not what Jesus is saying here. I want to make that abundantly clear. That is not what Jesus is saying here. It starts with this parable, with a reckoning. The wrong was seen. And just a quick note, 10,000 talents versus 100 denarii. 10,000, the largest number in Jesus' day, or so I've heard. A talent, the largest denomination of money. 100 denarii, 100 days of a day laborer. So in modern terms, I've heard, it's about 100 denarii, 10,000, 13,000 dollars. A sizable loan, but repayable. 10,000 talents. The commentator that I read said, consider that to be a billion dollars. Attainable, unattainable. I'm not going to raise a billion dollars in my lifetime. Doable, undoable. But there is a reckoning. There is an accounting. There is a public statement that this wrong was done. And there was on the part of the first slave, and yes, the word is slave, there was a pleading for forgiveness, which was granted. So often in life, and I think particularly of victims of sexual, emotional, psychological abuse, physical abuse, there has been told to you, if you are a Christian, you will forgive it. You will somehow absorb within yourself all of the loose ends and hold it within because Jesus wants you to. No. <laughs> and let that person go ahead scot-free as if nothing had happened. 
That is not what is being said here. There is a public accounting of the harm. And then there is a public forgiveness. Why does Jesus have to use such horrible words, I have to ask you in this? Why does he have to come at it with words like torture and prison? I mean, why? I don't know for sure. I can't say exactly why. However, I will say that I wonder if the only way Jesus can get our attention is to say something that shocks you. Do you understand, my disciples, Jesus is saying, that forgiveness is that important? It is huge. It isn't just the next to the best. It is the best thing you can possibly do with your life. The realm of forgiveness is the realm of God. They are the same. You must forgive. And as disciples of Jesus, your work is to live in that forgiveness with accountability. Jesus does not want you to suffer in silence. Jesus does not want you to take inside your self-harm that has been done to you, things you have witnessed, things you've experienced, and have it sit somewhere in your body, your soul, your mind, and rot there. It needs to be expressed. And my friends, I want to make sure that you know I am available to you if you wish to speak. Pastor Alicia is available to you if you wish to speak, so you do not carry that burden alone, so you do not suffer on your own. There is the correct way for this, and it is never secrecy. It can be privacy, but it is not secrecy. If you need to speak, make an appointment with me or with her, or with someone else you trust, and talk about it. Do not suffer in silence. One of the greatest gifts that God gives us is the ability to forgive. It isn't possible without divine help, however you define the divine. One of the best analogies I have ever, ever received was this, that forgiveness is not me doing the work for that other person. No, 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 I am not God. Instead, imagine forgiveness as being a golden pair of scissors given to you. And with that divine scissors also comes the divine hand with your willingness, cutting the strings, the bonds, the chains that hold you bound to that person or that incident or that situation. With the divine hand guiding you, you cut that connection. They go free, and you are now free yourself. What happens with them is now God's. Remember what we heard earlier, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we do this to free ourselves. The beauty of that is that there is the other positive part, which somehow in that act of forgiveness, that person may as well encounter the living God. It is just that important. It is just that important. I don't know if you know the story of Desmond Tutu, and Nelson Mandela, apartheid in South Africa. Are you familiar with it? Incredible segregation. Black South Africans, given no positions of power, could not hold any part of government, very limited in what they could own at all. And any time there was any effort to bring justice or civil rights, it would be immediately squashed. And there were 
false accusations, kidnappings, murders, etc. When finally the world woke up to see what was happening there and we began to respond, and finally apartheid ended, there was the incredible work of what do we do to rebuild South Africa. This is when Nelson Mandela became president. But it was Archbishop Bishop Desmond Tutu who, through divine inspiration, said this is what we will do. This is not the Hague where there is an accounting for war crimes and then there is the lifetime punishment. No, instead, it was the Truth and Reconciliation Committee that was formed, and this is what they did. In a room setting, the victim or the victim's family, if the victim had died, and the accuser came into the same place, and the charges were read. The accounting of the murders, the kidnappings, the false accusations, the taking of property, the rapes, etc., were read publicly acknowledged, and then the victim, having had a chance to speak as well, the victim and the court forgave the accused person. This is how they knew they could move on, and this is how a nation could move on with accountability, incredible forgiveness. With ability, incredible forgiveness. I just don't think I can make this point strong enough, particularly if you are like me, a nice Midwestern girl. We do not take the pain and the difficulty and find a place within our own bodies to hold that pain. We speak it out, we write it out, we acknowledge it. And in that space, we allow then God the chance to do what no human could ever do, which is to release us. You know what we're going to do, don't you? Not publicly. But at least now, I'm not, we're not going to miss this opportunity hearing the words of Jesus, our Lord and Savior not take a chance to pray. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. Repeat this. You can whisper it or you can say it in your mind, and it is this, dear Jesus. Your words are hard, but your words are true. Give me courage to admit what I need to forgive. And what has happened? Give me courage to take the next step. To allow your overwhelming forgiveness to come into my life. I choose to trust you. I choose to let you help me. And I will choose to forgive. Amen. May God bless you, give you courage, protect you, look over you, and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We invite you now to remain seated as we sing this beautiful song, There is a Wideness in God's Mercy. Allow the words to come into you, find a home within you and give you courage. Amen. Like the 
confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please bow your heads 
and open your hearts and join me in the prayers of intercession. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We pray for the church. Bless the missions and ministries of diverse congregations, that they uplift the good news of salvation in ways that can be understood. We pray for David Hernandez today as he receives the presence of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at his baptism this morning. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all who govern, encourage those in positions of power to lead with empathy, practice forgiveness, and care for those who struggle. We pray for a hedge of protection around our police and fire departments, our volunteers and caregivers, and all they serve. May they work and serve according to your will. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind, for those strained financially, those living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out for mercy. Let us pray especially for the recipients of our prayer quilts and pockets, for Sarah, Don, and Lynn Ballou. We offer continued prayers for Joyce and Skip, Chris, Mike, I'm sorry, Mick, Lottie, Helga, Phyllis, Chris, Ruby, Manuel, and for the families of St. Mark's. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation. Open our hearts to the practice of intentional invitation. Help us to forgive each other, practice patience, and choose welcome over judgment. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. We pray for your blessing on our children and youth ministries, Lutheran Social Services, Project Hand, and our prayer quilt ministry and Lutheran Re World Relief quilt ministry. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Here, other intercessions may be offered either aloud or silently in your heart. As they have both been recently hospitalized again, we pray for healing, protection, guidance, good medical care, and a complete recovery. God, you mercy prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are pray for Don, for compassionate love, healing, strength, and courage, and your comfort, and for Sarah, as she recovers from a fracture in her back, for the lessening of pain, for strength, for courage, and comfort. We pray, we pray also for David, David Hernandez, as he receives the presence of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at his baptism today. Gracious Lord, we pray that you will surround each of these recipients of the prayer pocket and prayer quilt with your love and your compassion, your presence. And Lord, we do pray that they will know that it is you. Amen. Amen.
Christ be with you always. You may share the peace of Christ with anyone who is with you. Share the peace also if you are at home. Share the, share the peace in the comments or text an offering of peace to someone. Peace, peace to all. <laughs> Beautiful singing. Well, there are so many things to give thanks for today. I'd just like to point back to last weekend and say thank you to everyone for all of your assistance. What a wonderful day for God's work, our hands, um, that every one of our um, homebound members who wanted to be visited was um, and, um, and beyond. <laughs> and as well as you, when you leave, make sure you take one of the blessing bags. You can leave it in your car or put it in your backpack, whatever it is you do, so that if you see someone in need, you can simply take it out and ask them, would you like this? Are you hungry? And um, we know it won't change their life. We know that. It might provide them food for a day or, two, or uh, uh, two meals, but we'll open our eyes more and more to see those around us and to help us to respond with compassion. So thank you so much for all your help, all of you. Thank you so much for last weekend. We are incredibly grateful. So thanks to you. We um, thank you also for being partners with us and with Jesus, our master rabbi, <laughs> here at St. Mark's. We continue to look for ways to reach out into this community. We want to be a beacon on a hill. We want people to know who Jesus is, and you help make that happen. So thank you for partnering with us in ministry, and we will receive our offering. able. children and welcome us to your table receive our lives and the gifts we offer abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child Jesus Christ amen
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. It is truly right and proper at all times and places that we give thanks to you, Lord. Holy Father, almighty, ever-living Lord, therefore with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to, to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after the supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is my body, I'm sorry, this is my blood of the new covenant, given for you, for, for, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And our Lord Jesus, and our Lord Jesus also taught us to pray. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, Save us from, from the time, time of trial, and, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. We invite you to come forward at the usher's discretion. The cups contain um, red wine or white grape juice, and there is also gluten-free wafers uh, upon your request. You may be seated as our communion assistants come forward.
must be Christ is with us, he is with us, break the bread, drink the wine, Christ is with us here, in this bread there is he. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life giving hope to a world in need. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine, to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. St. Mark's family, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Forgive me. 
for being too loud, maybe? I don't know. A couple of announcements this morning. Uh, a few weeks ago, the pastor had polled the congregation in terms of some ideas that you might have for increasing membership here and attracting new members. Turns out that we forgot to ask the names of those people who put stuff on cards. So we have no idea who did it, but we do have 30 items here that the congregation would think that uh, maybe it would help attract new members. It's on this sheet of paper, all of those different things that you've thought about. And then it's back in the narthex, and we'd like to have you pick one up and take it home. Pick one or two things that you think might be something that you'd like to get involved with, and let the pastors know. Let us know what you'd like to get involved with so we can enact some of these ideas that you have. Love to hear from you. So please pick this up in the narthex afterwards. September 24th, we start our, we start our first communion classes. Isn't that a great thing to think about? We haven't done that in a long time. We'll also have adult Bible study in Jacobson Hall between services on the 24th. And confirmation, yes. Today, as you've already been told, we're going to have a special congregational meeting for a vote today. We would like to have you remain seated after the postlude, postlude so that we can get this meeting underway and not tire you up all morning long with the meeting. A number of things I would like to present to you before we start the meeting, so please remain seated if you can, and we will get the meeting underway. I don't know how many of you have read it in the uh, newsletter or not, but we did have a water intrusion problem here at the church over the Labor Day holiday. We had water overflowing from the sink in the men's room, and it went down to the walls, it went down into the bathroom down below, it went down into the choir room. On the 5th of September, we called ServPro, a water intrusion remediation company, to come in and dry things out, and with the help of Walt Bergener and, and Dennis, they got it all dried out. We've confirmed that we're all dried out as of Tuesday this last week. We believe that the problem is as a result of some old drainage systems that we have in this church coming from the restrooms going down to the main drain system. And they're crumbling inside, and as a result, they're plugging up the drains. And so we're going to have to be replacing some vertical drain lines coming down from the restrooms upstairs. We don't know what it's going to be yet in terms of cost or the, or the scope of the work, but we're going to have to do that. We're also going to have some damage. We have some damages in the walls that we're going to have to uh, repair. We're not sure the scope of that yet. We're working on that, and we'll let you know as soon as we know. We have filed a claim with our insurance company, and we expect that we're going to be covered with that. Also in the newsletter, I indicated that we have contracted with a company called Defend, uh, Defend um, with Security Defense Systems. They're going to come in here and they're going to teach us how to be secure and safe. Or they're going to give us, uh, the first step is to do a vulnerability assessment. These people are, are two wonderful people. We've all met them. We've interviewed them. We've walked the campus with them. There are two police officers, active duty police officers with San Diego PD. And they've done this with their church and their church is very secure and safe and they have a number of security items going on in their church. Some members are actually involved with some of the security measures that are being taken place. So we'll start with a vulnerability assessment. We'll determine what our level of vulnerability is. And from that, we'll develop a training plan where we're gonna train people in the congregation how to deal with certain uh, things that happen, like earthquakes, fire, a heart attack, somebody you know having a, a physical or mental issue, um, and including it at the end probably some active shooter training as well. We want to be prepared for the worst. We like to be able to say that we're not going to be hit, but you know as well as I do what's going on in society today. We don't want to be we don't want to be too complacent. We want to be prepared, and not to scare you, but just to be prepared. That's what it's all about. So we're going to be starting that very soon. We'll let you know how that unravels as well. And I don't think I have anything else, Pastor. Did I miss anything? Okay, we're good. Thanks. So you can sit or you can stand, whatever's better for you, because we're going to ask you to not leave. Normally we have you stand, so you're ready to go. So whatever is best for you, but we will sing from the heart, shout to the Lord. <laughs> Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. Oh, my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let heaven 
every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let me sing, power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God. But don't leave. Don't, don't leave. <laughs>